Hi, welcome or welcome back. If you don't know me, I'm Anna, clinical psychology doctoral candidate. This channel is all about real life applications to psychology. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today we're talking about something that has actually been requested quite a bit, which is surprising to me because it's not something I hear about quite often. And that is psychedelic assisted therapy. So using psychedelics to treat mental illnesses. This is part of a playlist called Research Revealed on this channel, where we talk about one study at a time that's really fascinating, breaking down its findings and how we can apply that to our own lives. So that is what we will be doing today. Just a little bit of a disclaimer first, this video is in no way, shape or form meant to condone the use of any illicit substances. This is just talking about a study that compiled a bunch of other studies on therapy using psychedelics as a supplement, but it is not in any way uh, telling you to go out and do this on your own. That is completely different from what we're talking about today, as you will hopefully see in this video. This is really just a video about what we know psychedelic assisted therapy can help with, what some of the outcomes of it are. And so if it's something that you're interested in, you know, it's definitely still in an experimental phase. Some of it has been pretty well corroborated for certain things already, like such as ketamine treatments for treatment resistant depression so you know there are some things that already have a good deal of research behind it already but this is still very much a novel pioneer area of research and so take it with a grain of salt so psychedelics have been investigated as possible effective treatments for a number of mental disorders ranging from substance abuse disorders ptsd anxiety depression depression caused by a serious or life-threatening terminal illness social anxiety in autistic adults, OCD, so a quite wide range of mental disorders. Psychedelics as defined by this study, I'm not sure if this is you know, how everyone defines them. I was surprised to read a couple of these under the category of psychedelic, but they were talking about classic substances that affect serotonin, such as shrooms, psilocybin, LSD, DMT containing ayahuasca, as well as antactogens such as MDMA, atypical psychedelics such as ibogaine, dissociative anesthetics such as NDMA antagonist ketamine. So the study says all of these substances can induce alterations of conscious states as well as a wide range of psychological, cognitive, emotional, and biological effects that may be relevant for their therapeutic action when administered with a psychotherapeutic context. So psychedelic assisted therapy typically is done with psilocybin, AKA shrooms, LSD, and MDMA, and it is typically done with one to two therapists and the use of music. So the present study was from 2020. It was a systematic review of 15 articles and 178 patients that did this type of treatment. It included a thematic analysis as as well as a critical appraisal. So all of the articles were ranging from 2014 to 2019. They took place in the US, Switzerland, the UK, Mexico, Brazil, some were in medical contexts, others in ceremonial and religious contexts. The majority of the studies were rated as medium high to high quality based on their metrics. The validity, ethical considerations, and value of the studies were found to be of high quality. So what are some of the important predictors of a positive outcome in psychedelic assisted treatment? The outcome is affected by two types of things. First one is set, and this is the internal psychological variables that play a role in what kind of experience you're going to have. So things like personality, expectations going into it, suggestibility, preparation, intentions, mood, psychopathology, like, like what kind of mental illness you have. And then there's setting. So this refers to the external environment, the physical, the interpersonal, the broader social and cultural context. That was fast. Woo! Time for an unboxing video. Oh yeah? So the creepy banker, is that now? So How do you know? I didn't see her card, so I asked. So this is why some people, even when they go into these trips with the best of intentions, the best of expectations, if the setting is wrong, if there's people around them who have bad juju or they're someplace where they feel unsafe, then that could negatively affect the outcome. Trust and good connection and rapport with the therapist or the person guiding you through the experience was something that was found to be really important for predicting what kind of outcome you were gonna have. So one person said, it's not just the psilocybin sessions, it's that human connection and the support that comes with that human connection that ultimately leads to success at the end of the day. By the way, this is the exact same 
a mechanism by which talk therapy is done. Like, yes, there are certain techniques, certain mechanisms of change in all types of therapy, but ultimately they're all done by the therapist. And it's really important to have a good relationship to the therapist. Preparatory sessions were also a predictor. So having some sessions leading up to it, feeling prepared, knowing what to expect. Music, having good music around you while it's happening can also induce more positive outcomes. I found that there was kind of a lack of discussion about set variables in this critical analysis, like not a lot about people's expectations going into it or mindset or attitudes. But if I were to venture a guess, I would say probably the people that expect it to go well are people that actually have better experiences. So what were the outcomes? Like what can we actually say happens as a result of psychedelic assisted therapy? First of all, it's more effective, less normative and more rapid in terms of focusing on inner processes than talk therapy is. So th talk therapy is great. Obviously that's what I've dedicated my whole career to. Psychedelic assisted talk therapy though can be much more quicker and less like, okay, talking about stuff, trying to get deep over the course of several months or years, but just like bam, one to two sessions, your brain just suddenly completely shifts things around. Greater healing, longer sessions, more attentive therapists were some factors that people said they really preferred over talk therapy. It also seems like it's more of an internal experience rather than a verbal experience. It's something happening in your brain as opposed to talking about it in order to induce something happening in your brain. People are also more open to future talk therapy than before these sessions. So interestingly, if they were feeling a little bit on the fence about wanting to do traditional therapy after doing psychedelic assisted therapy, they were more likely to give talk therapy a try. They experienced increased insight, self-awareness, self-understanding, improved insight into the disorder that they had, its root causes, the behaviors associated with it. They had some autobiographical visions of themselves. Some of them experienced a new understanding of death and dying, a changed perspective, what they call deschematizing. This is what much of therapy tries to do slowly through stuff like cognitive restructuring, schema therapy, etc. Getting you to change the maladaptive ways that you view the world, the beliefs you hold that don't really serve you. Some other consequences were changed perceptions of the self, which is important in many disorders, I would argue most disorders, such as depression, anxiety, eating disorders, personality disorders, psychosis, you name it. Usually these affect disturbances in the way that you perceive yourself. They also brought on an increased sense of connectedness. Connection, connection internally, like with their own emotions and senses and identity, and also externally, like with other people and with nature and the world at large. There was a real acknowledgement of the interconnectedness of all beings. An acknowledgement of the interconnectedness of all beings is something that's critical to both self-compassion and compassion for others which has been associated with lower levels of psychopathology and overall higher well-being. So interconnectedness is a great belief to hold. Therefore, it's not surprising that psychedelic assisted therapy was also associated with increased self-confidence, self-esteem, self-acceptance, self-compassion, and self-care. Some of these studies reported mystical, religious, or spiritual aspects of healing. So having transpersonal experiences, feeling a sense of awe and transcendence, a sense of dissolving the self called ego death, a connection to greater forces, the unity of everything. It's kind of interesting, like this is the one that you kind of associate with um, psychedelic experiences, like people feeling like I'm having a spiritual experience. And we don't really know, like, is it true spiritual insight or does it just feel like it? Like, I think many of us know like that one person that has maybe taken too many psychedelics and sees connections where there are none or feels awe over things that aren't really that deep. But is it possible that these types of therapy truly cause spiritual healing? Obviously, this is something I cannot answer. I think it kind of falls on the subjective perspective of whoever you're asking to give their perspective on this. Expanded emotional spectrum was another outcome. So experiencing a wider range of emotions, emotionally meaningful experiences, ranging from bliss, joy, peace, love, to anger, anxiety, terror, dysphoria, paranoia. Feeling a wide range of emotions is usually a sign of health. When I first started doing like a, an emotional tracker through colors a couple months ago, I noticed I was mostly feeling anxious and productive most days. So either I was feeling productive or I was feeling 
anxious about not being productive. And the next month, even though I was sad a few days more than the previous month, I was glad that I experienced a wider range of emotions than before because, because emotional variety is a sign of health. It's not good to be constantly stuck in one mindset where you're constantly happy, constantly sad, constantly anxious, constantly angry. All emotions serve a purpose. So if you're only really feeling one emotion most days, you're not really getting the maximum benefit of emotions that could serve you. That's why the study said sometimes a change in mood from their usual emotional state was considered therapeutic in and of itself. Some disorders limit what emotions can be accessed, so expanding that is a great sign of progress and health. Also, the study found an improved ability to process unresolved emotions and the ability to transform negative or painful emotions into positive or pleasant ones. Acceptance of one situation was another outcome, particularly for terminally ill patients. Accepting the situation was something that was able to be done a little bit more. Symptom reduction occurred in eating disorders, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and substance use. Interestingly, although reduced withdrawal and cravings did occur for substance abusers, there were even benefits for people who didn't have a substance abuse disorder diagnosis. So even for people that aren't addicts, they still experienced decreased drug use after having this uh, psychedelic assisted therapy, which is kind of paradoxical if you think about it, like doing a drug to do less drugs, but it was found that it worked. They also reported positive changes in their relationships with friends, family members, increased altruism and pro-social behavior, like doing kind things for other people, giving back. Participants described positive and often long lasting improvements in their quality of life, well-being, sense of peace, mental space, sense of meaning and purpose in life, appreciation of beauty, art, music, nature. One participant said, a veil dropped from my eyes. Things were suddenly clear, glowing, bright. I looked at plants and felt their beauty. I can still look at my orchids and experience that. That is the one thing that has really lasted. Some studies talked about how participants were able to maintain the sense of well-being even after relapsing and even after symptoms returned. So even if the disorder came back, their well-being was often still better off than before. Participants also started re-engaging with previously enjoyed activities like practicing sports, changing their nutritional habits, reading poetry and other hobbies. The changes in their quality of life were associated with revised priorities in life or more clarity around their values. Which is again interesting because some types of therapy like ACT actually try to work on changing your values or getting you to live more in accordance with your values. It's very interesting that psychedelic assisted therapy was able to accomplish that. Okay, so how do we incorporate these predictors of positive outcomes into regular therapy or into just trying to get better at mental health? Because if you're anything like me, you might be hearing this and going, sounds great. Not gonna be me though. The truth is that even though this treatment sounds very promising, it's not for everyone and it's not without its drawbacks, which we'll get to in a second. So what are some things that we can do or focus on to mimic these positive outcomes without the use of a mind altering substance and maybe at a more slow and regulated pace? I should mention here that in some of these studies, treatment resistant patients, so patients with severe disorders that had not responded that had not responded to traditional therapy in placebo groups where they weren't given a psychedelic still reported enduring clinically significant improvements. And this may actually reflect the importance of factors other than the substance itself. So things like trust, interpersonal rapport with the therapist, getting attention, getting longer treatment sessions, having a safe treatment setting, all of these things can actually help a positive outcome. In other words, it's not just about taking a substance, it's also about finding someone, if not a therapist, then someone in your personal life who you trust, have rapport with, who makes you feel seen and heard, who can focus on you, give you attention for long periods of time, who feels safe to you. If you can find this with a therapist, it can't go very wrong. You can absolutely make the same changes in therapy that you would with the use of a psychedelic. It just might take longer and a little bit more effort to get there. And if so, if that's the route you wanna take, here are some things to focus on in therapy, or if for some reason you can't have therapy, just some things to work on on your own. Main insight. 
Find someone who challenges the way you view yourself, the way you view others, the way you are psychologically conceptualized. Some tips here, try insight-oriented or psychodynamic therapy to gain some insight into yourself and your relationships. Try CBT or schema therapy for insight into the way you think about the world. Try journaling assignments. Ask your therapist to discuss with you what your conceptualization is and talking about how to better understand why your mental health is struggling or how these issues came to form and what can be helpful for that. Try to also increase your sense of connectedness. Constantly remind yourself of your own humanity, the humanity of others, the interconnectedness of all beings. Volunteer, connect with people, take part in hobbies. Think about the consequences of your actions and your words. Take new perspectives, consider all the different causes and an outcome. Treat yourself and others kindly. All these are ways to increase a sense of connectedness in the world. Walk around with a sense of awe and gratitude about the world that you live in, the body that you inhabit. Savor every little thing. Treat everything like you would if you had a belief in animism, which is this idea that even inanimate objects have a soul or an essence that must be revered. Think about how tiny and unimportant you are. Just to is significant little speck in this cosmos of wonder. Work on accessing a wide range of emotions, letting yourself feel painful emotions instead of avoiding them, better understanding your emotions, better understanding what to do with them, how to transform the painful ones. Some tips here are try emotion-focused therapy. This can be really helpful for helping you access emotions if you struggle to do so or helping you transform emotions. CBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, is also something that works a lot with emotion regulation. You can also ask your therapist for some psychoeducation on emotions if you feel like, I need to get a better grasp on my own emotions or what emotions really do. Ask your therapist, hopefully they'll be able to give you some psychoeducation on that. And radically accept what cannot be changed. In order to do this, you have to first acknowledge what is within your control and what is not. Something that can again be really helpful with this is DBT as well as ACT. Lastly, can we rely on these findings? This study, you know, the studies that it looked at within this study suggest that psychedelic assisted therapy can be very valuable and effective for a wide range of concerns. With that being said, the research in this area is still just in its infancy and more research is needed in order to substantiate its effectiveness. Something else to consider here is that there may be a selection bias or an expectation bias. It's possible that the people who participated in these studies volunteered to do so because they believed it would work for them. A substantial proportion of them had already had some prior experience with psychedelics. Um, depending on the study and the drug, it ranged from 10 to 67 percent. So. A good amount of people already had some experience with psychedelics so it may have weeded out a lot of the people that this might not work so well for or they might actually not enjoy it as much it's also possible that research in this field as in any new research area focuses too much on the positive aspects and not as much on the negatives or just hasn't identified the negatives yet like we don't really know long term what this can do for people. A quote here from the study was patient selection in pioneer studies is often unintentionally biased towards positive outcomes and study samples are still small and non-generalizable. More studies and larger and more heterogeneous patient samples would be needed to appraise the real impact and ecological validity of these treatments. Citation is in the description box if you want to check out the study. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you thought. I was so curious why this question kept getting suggested to me, so hopefully this answered some of your questions, if not all. I hope you have a great few days and I'll see you soon.